Welcome to the Fans Ed Sports Show. Talk about the X's and O's. Talk and break down for the success of each team. Slow your roll. Whether he has something to do with it or not, we are adding that to the clock. No team gonna freaking run the ball like that. That's challenging your manhood. Not That's, too much. People still not remember that. Much. So look, I don't, I don't need to hear anything from you, Mike. It's been a crazy week for college football. They value seniority. When, when, no, when they're looking at the schedule, that's a tough schedule. Go beat everyone. You Girl, already know. Let's go. <laughs> already know. Welcome to the Fans Edge Sports Show, hosted by your boy 2 and 6, Mike, and I got my co-host right here, my guy Terry, man. We got to get a new intro video and get my guy Terry on that mug, man. Hey, clean me up. <laughs> me on there. How you For doing sure. tonight, brother? I'm chilling, man. Just trying to make it. Just trying to make it, man. You know, That's right. uh, just, just enjoying ourselves the best way we can, you know, and it's always good when we are here to talk about college football. But but before we get into it, we need everybody to make sure that you are hitting that like and subscribe button. Share with your people all on social media, man, so we can get more people here, man, at the Fan's Edge. And you see the title of the show, man. We talking about Ryan Williams and the Jeremiah Smith battle. They are gonna be battling it out all year, but not just that, for the next probably two and a half years as well but um to uh get started in the show man uh, i wanted to recap some games I, you know that i watched this weekend and i gotta start off because you know my wife's from arkansas and spent 10 years of my life in arkansas you know arkansas and texas a&m have been playing at jerry's world since you know he he built the new stadium and everything right this was the last game last game and to be honest, Texas A&M kind of been just running away with this, like, series, especially since the CFP has started, right? Right. Uh, Arkansas looked like, hey, they were about to come out slinging, um, you know, run away with the game. But everything just kind of went on the back burner. Uh, you know, they end up scoring 21, I mean, uh, 17 points. You know, they, they put up 14 quick. And then couldn't do anything, didn't put up any more points until the fourth quarter where they kicked the field goal. Texas A&M walks away with that game at um, 21 to 17. And here's the thing what I've been trying to tell Arkansas fans about this, Terry, is because I see a lot of them. Some of them want to blame Bobby. Some of them want to blame Sam Pittman. And here's the issue. I think that their quarterback is very talented. His biggest mm -hmm. issue and something that we kind of be talking about is that throwing with anticipation, you know, seeing the route develop before it actually happened. And he ends up throwing a lot of picks. Now, I kind of have a little inside information that, hey, there might be some timing issues going on with the quarterback and the wide receivers because they're not actually going that hard in practice. Yeah, I mean, dude, hearing about that at the college level is just insane. Um, and honestly, I didn't, you know, I didn't catch their game, um, so thanks for giving me an update on it. I mean, it sounds like that was probably a heartbreaker, right? Especially, you know, you're saying they've been playing at Jerry's World, uh, so obviously for it to be the last one, that game probably had a lot of juice, a lot of energy. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know, man. Uh, Mike, I'm gonna pass it off to you on Arkansas, man. That seems like you got yeah. some. <laughs> some knowledge there brother yeah i had some folks there at the tailgate i had some folks there at the game as well man and uh i'm telling you i really think that the offensive scheme is there you can see what bobby petrino is trying to do just mm -hmm. right now the quarterback is not ready to do that because you know he has to be able to anticipate and he's not able to do that he's just not right now so but also if it's a timing issue i i mean you hear it all the time like you gotta fix that uh, you have to because you hear all the elite programs and stuff say that sometimes the practice is harder than the game. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So I don't understand. There, there's definitely some disconnect. And if that is an issue, then that falls on Sam Pittman. You know? Yeah, 100%. He's, he's the head dog. Um, mm -hmm. But there's one that I, I think that you are familiar with, Terry. I think it was a Friday night game. Miami went up against Virginia Tech. 
And we thought Virginia Tech was going going smooth on out of there with a dub. But hey. Miami comes back, fights back. Uh, they end up winning the game 38-34. Talk to me. Yeah. I mean, the hater in me wanted to call that last play a catch, man, but you can't call that a catch in that situation. He didn't control yeah. the ball long enough. I mean, they granted they called that they called it that on the field, but you kind of have to call it that on the field. You know what I mean? That's kind of mm-hmm. the way it ended is kind of how it had to end. And I don't think that it was I don't think that he possessed the ball long enough for it to be a catch, but for them to struggle with a team like Virginia Tech, it kind of at least shows that Miami is they have the potential to be the the old Miami, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And now, obviously, these are the types of games in the past that they would lose. Right. Like last year to Georgia Tech, mm-hmm. you know, the guy was down on the fumble. We can talk about it last year. He was down, or we can talk about it now, excuse me. He was down, but even then they couldn't stop him from scoring a touchdown. They got Cam Ward now, man, and it was almost like he willed them to a victory here. I don't know, man. Miami could – it's still on for them to finish their season undefeated. And I don't think it's that big of a stretch if they continue to get better. Now, if they don't, then they're going to fall apart like they always do. And wouldn't that just be the funniest thing that could possibly happen? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I mean, the U fans obviously think that they're back here. Here's where I, I look at it as is, is what we ended up seeing was a little bit of Cam Ward's issues, right? Yeah, the, they show for the, sure. Yeah, they definitely show. It's those what the moments, right? Yeah. That's exactly mm-hmm. what we saw um, out of Cam Moore that you knew was going to pop up. We were just wondering when. Right. And, I mean, I, you can say that Cam Moore kind of put them in, like, even though he helped bring them back, he kind of put them in those type of situations. And he definitely played a role in that, dude. I mean, yeah. <laughs> 100%. Yeah. But I'll say this, man. I'll tell you this. I do understand why Rutgers was able to walk out with a dub against them with only throwing single-digit passing when I look at those trenches and how you can actually run the ball on them. Yeah, like, and you know Josh Pate, you you know who Josh Pate is. He put out a thing saying um, that Miami was like an SEC team but in the ACC. And to me, they look more like a Pac-12 team. Right. Maybe I'm wrong, but like, to me, they look more like a Pac-12 team. They look small, basically. Like, and I know that you know they have a lot of people that Ohio State wanted and stuff like that, but um, they just don't look like they're built like you know an, a high-level SEC team or even like a high-level Big Ten team. Right. I agree with that. I agree with that. And uh, you know, talking about different conferences, you know, it was a guy down there in the SEC that was always this offseason <laughs> worried about what the hell was going on in Big Ten country. Lane <laughs> Kiffin too busy watching pockets and not watching the scoreboard. Kentucky <laughs> upsets Ole Miss 20 to 17. This is what I like to say. Show me the money. Hey, uh, Lane Kiffin, this is what you get. As a grown man, you should never be pocket watching. I was taught this as, you know, a, yep. a little, little kid. I'm talking about elementary school. Don't worry about what the next man get. Focus on yours. And you didn't focus on yours. You went in the game sleeping at home. I seen your fans. They mad y'all got the little, the sip in the end zones and all of that. No, they just want the tradition back. You're trying to bring this swag, this little tw- – Twitter stuff and all of that. You might need to stay on Twitter because I don't know. <laughs> your, coaching, your coaching ain't up to par. You know, y'all are supposed to be a fringe playoff team, right? What you think, Terry? Yeah, I mean, and I don't know. They still could be, uh, but I'm kind of a fan of Lane, of Lane Kiffin, man. I like him. I like that him being on social media and stuff like that. Now, the pocket watching stuff, that was always Lane because everybody, like, everybody knows that certain schools are going to have more money. It just is what it is, man. I mean, if you don't like it, then make your school into one of those schools or leave and go somewhere else. But it's for them to lose to Kentucky, I think that says – one, it says a lot about Kentucky because, you know, Kentucky almost beat Georgia a couple weeks ago. Or what mm-hmm. was it last week? I don't even remember. But um, almost beat Georgia, turn around and beat Ole Miss. I mean, you can't not give them credit there. You know, they, they look like maybe at nice. least their defense is good. Their defense um, obviously good. It, it's maybe like a traditional Kentucky team. I mean – their defense is usually pretty good, but their offense is usually blah and kind of like what they're looking like this year. But anyway, for Ole Miss to lose that game, it's still 
Like you got to win those games, dude. If you're going to be that playoff team that could actually make a run, because they put a lot of money, they brought in a ton of transfers, dude. They put a lot of money into the portal also, um, and and brought back a lot of people too. People don't want to talk about that. Ole Miss is one of those mm. teams that, like, if they were if they're if they're uh, trajectory or not their trajectory, but if their history wasn't so bad recently, that's another team that maybe you would look at and say now you're bust because of what they did and what they brought back. But for them to lose to Kentucky, it's embarrassing. I mean, I don't know, man. That's all you can say about hey, it. All I'm gonna say is, is all them recruits not going to Ole Miss to lose no basketball school. But I'll say this: Hey, Lane Kiffin, you got any more of them players that you want to send to Ohio State? That's they right. doing good <laughs> up here. So, uh, yeah, shout out Lane Kiffin for that, man. You hey, gotta respect we... him, man. That's our farm pre- uh, farm program. <laughs> Facts, facts. Before we do anything again, make sure you hit that like that like button and that subscribe button, man. And uh, you can also uh, follow me and Terry. You can see our uh, handles right there up under our names right there. Um, and then, you know, there, there was one game in the Big Ten um, that we got to talk about, and it ended up leading – to a very, very immediate rule change um, that was petitioned to the NCAA and granted right away was uh, Minnesota went to the big house, uh, went to team up north, and they just barely lost 34, I mean, 24-27. Uh, the team up north wins, man. Uh, how did you feel about that game? I mean, you know, this was a team – you know, program that has been known for, you know, being a second half team, you know, being a second mm-hmm. half program. Uh, this was a program known for covering the spread. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they couldn't even do that. Having issues with the row your boat uh, folks, man. What you think about that team up north? Yeah, and it's back to back weeks, I guess, in the only two weeks that Alex Orgy started for Michigan. Um, in the second half, they kind of just got dominated. I mean, they dominated the first half of this game. Um, and to me, I, you know, I thought the game was over. Uh, and they came out in the second half and couldn't do anything at all. And, I mean, honestly, it's their offense seems like it's very easy to be shut down <laughs> as long as you just figure out what they're doing and adjust to it. And they, they don't seem to have answers. So, I don't know. I mean, that's really – that was kind of an embarrassing game for Michigan, dude. Like, you got to beat Minnesota by more than that. Minnesota's terrible this year. Nobody expects them to be good this year. Um, and the way that the game ended was crazy. I mean, did, I, my personal opinion on that is you can't – I feel like they shouldn't have made any call. I know that there's, like, the Michigan fans saying, like, oh, well, they touched the ball before. Like, all of that shit was too close in that situation to make that call. You know what I mean? Especially when it's not reviewable. So, to me, yeah. that shit should have stood, and they should have been fighting for their life to stop them from getting a field goal. <laughs> but I don't know, man. What you, what do you think about that game? I mean, I always I'm this is what I've always said. I gotta stick with it. Uh, this is why you don't leave the game in the hands of the refs. Uh I mean, after I know. after the freaking I mean it, and this is that's the part that sucks about uh about football is is you just can't do it. I mean, in 2019, Ohio State fans, we <laughs> we learned multiple times like you can't leave the game in the hands of the refs mm-hmm. um because you can get screwed. And, and that's the sad reality about it. To be honest, Minnesota had plenty of times where they didn't even have to be in that situation, right? But I felt like there were some bad play calls, some bad uh, clock management on PJ Flex uh, part as well, mm-hmm. where he didn't have to be in that in that type yeah. of situation. And here's yeah, the I thing, because I think J Book put this out as well, because I was thinking the same thing. It's like, what is up? With all of these coaches or whatever, like playing scared or just having a brain lapse in the fundamentals of coaching, and that's how you end up losing it for your team. Because that yep. <laughs> Minnesota could have really had that game won, and then you force you would have forced that team up north to do something that they're not comfortable doing, and that's throwing the ball. And honestly, yeah. like you were speaking about their offense. And I feel like their offense is basically made for you to make a mistake and then they capitalize on that mistake. Mm -hmm. And if you're not making those mistakes, they're not capitalizing. 
and just not doing dumb stuff, dude. Um, in, in the second half of that game, Minnesota was running like two high safeties. Like they, they literally had been shutting them down completely and then just started running too high safety for whatever the hell reason. Like they were going to try to throw the ball and then they started running on them. And, you know, obviously that's how they ended up winning the game. But they were giving them, they were just giving them yardage. I'm like, y'all could get off the field. What are you doing? And they just mm-hmm. giving them yardage. I, I know exactly what you're talking about because I was just screaming. And that's what I'm saying. It's just the fundamentals of coaching. And yeah. I just didn't, don't understand. Like, we watched it with the USC's defense. I was just about to say, USC did the like, same thing, bro. Like, it, 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 USC, Arkansas State, and now P.J. Fleck. Like, are, are they just dumb brain? Like, what is going on? And, you know, what? They, they got a tough stretch coming up, dude. They're about to lose a couple games. I, you know, <laughs> I'm, I feel comfortable saying that they're about to lose at least, like, two or three games in the next the little stretch that they have. So, Man, I, I actually, mean, I think I took a screenshot of it. Because here, here's the stretch that, that I think they should be worried about starting on October 19th, that Saturday. You're talking about they go on the road to Illinois. They have their rivalry game. So, hold on. Let me stop you real quick. Mm-hmm. I got to start in this week. This week? The, the stretch starts this week. They're on the road at Washington. Washington is not a good team, dude, but neither is Minnesota. Yeah. And that was at home. And I don't think I don't think USC is that good of a team. We'll have to see how that works out. But I don't think they're that good of a team. Man, y'all here today? <laughs> well, but I'm a, they, I'm may not, they may ahead. not lose to Washington, Mike. They may not lose to Washington, but the, I, for the stretch of games, I have it starting this week because right. I don't think I think that they could lose to this team. I understand. I understand. Well, I'm going to start off with mine. I got October 19th. They got to go on the road to Illinois, Brad Bielema. Um, And, I mean, I think that's a game that Brad Bielema uh, is loving. They kind of play to his style, and I think if their offense is able to get off to a good start, um, I think that they already know their identity. That could be a tough a tough one for them going into uh, – yeah, going into that game. And here's the thing. No times or anything has been determined yet for this stretch that I'm talking about. Then they're at home against their rival, Michigan State, or whatever. And if Michigan State can clean up a lot of their turnovers and things, I don't really think they're a bad team. I just think that they have no. to clean up a lot of things um, mm-hmm. and a lot of mistakes. So I think mm-hmm. once they clean up those mistakes, if they're clean up the mistakes in the next three mm-hmm. weeks, Hey, they did, could, if they can not turn the ball over against Michigan, right. then they'll be okay. They if they turn the ball over, then it's, it's, right. it's going to get yeah. crazy. But because I do think their defense will have a little bit of smoke for what Michigan's got going on on offense. Yeah, and then you're talking about they have uh, they'll get Oregon at home, and then you would think that uh, you know that Oregon game is going to be a tough game, right? Okay, and then you think, oh, I get you know Indiana like. You looking at this preseason like ah, we get a rest after uh, Oregon, right? No, not this yeah. Indiana team, man. Terry, mm-hmm. you have been very high on this Indiana team. Tell us why uh, that Indiana <laughs> game is probably the game where they could possibly get blown out. Because some people have that. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I got them getting blown out. Okay, two, du- two double digit scores, double digits. It could, it could, man. Listen, Indiana. Kurt Signetti is cooking over there. And, he, dude, he came into the Big Ten, and he said it on camera. From the beginning, he said, we're here to compete with Ohio State or something like that, Michigan. So one of them, one of them two, he said. I think he said Ohio State. Um, he's like, we're not here. I'm, I'm not coming over here to Indiana to just be the regular old Indiana. We're about to be like that. And they look like that, dude. They brought that quarterback in from Ohio University, and a lot of the talent he brought from um, – where did he come from? Uh, James Madison. Yeah. A lot of the talent he brought from James Madison. Is that the right team? I'm not even sure. Oh, dude, me if I'm line. saying the wrong team, I'm going to get cooked in the comments. It's all right. I think it's James Don't Madison. Don't worry about them. Oh, I'm not. I'm not. We're, we're chilling, bro. Let's um, see. Anyway. I find it out. Anyway, he brought a lot of talent from there, dude. And I don't know, man. I, he's got the offense cooking. The only thing that worries me is their defense. But, again, I just – when it comes to Michigan specifically – I don't think that you need to be a top-level defense to stop what they have going on. 
I, I truly don't because I don't think USC or um, Minnesota are even like a top 50 defense in college football. And in the second half, they were completely shutting them down. So you ain't getting cooked in the comments. You was right. Boom. <laughs> 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 about to start cussing people out that ain't said nothing yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, and, uh, you know, we was talking about that uh, PJ Fleck, uh, he ended up coming out in his press conference saying that the Big Ten says they should have never threw a flag on that. I mean, and like I said, Big Ten came out with those rule changes. What do you think about the rule changes? Uh, how do you feel about, like, the Big Ten is – taking this action so fast, like, you know, because last year people was asking them to take action fast and they didn't, like, yeah. so what do you think about them taking action fast now? Is this lesson I, learned? I, uh, because, you know, they did put in the laws where they could take action, you know, so. Yeah, mid-season. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah they did. That was working out. <laughs> yeah, it's I working mean, out. But to be honest, it don't really mean nothing, dude. It's not going to change that game. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't know. Like, it's cool that they did that. It's almost like an acknowledgement of like, hey, we actually really got this one wrong. We need to make sure we do something so this doesn't happen again. But it really doesn't mean nothing. I mean, Michigan won the game off of it. Like, it is what it is. Yeah. It's like uh, when the Big Ten apologized to Denzel Burke. Like, yeah, I mean, not Denzel like, Burke, Denzel Ward. Like, yeah, mm, I still didn't get to play. <laughs> like, yeah. Now – are you, is, was that for the hit against Maryland? Is that what yeah, bro. Bro, that play is the Buckeye legend play, though, bro. You used to that play on every highlight tape. That's all right. <laughs> all right, man. Before we get into, uh, what's this, week six, uh, we preview those games, man. We got to talk about what we came here for. And I want to talk about Ryan Williams and Jeremiah Smith, the guys battling for freshman of the year. And you're talking about Ryan Williams, 16 receptions, 462 yards, five touchdowns with the average of all of, of 29, <laughs> basically. Yeah. That, I didn't then, even realize that. that is yeah. Insane. And then you got Jeremiah Smith over at Ohio State with three more catches with 19, uh, 19 uh, 364 yards, five touchdowns, and averaging 19 yards a catch. I mean, both of these young men – are great, but everybody is wanting to say, who's better? This one's better. That one's better. Oh, he's better because he's mm -hmm. 17, right? And it's like, we can make all of these different arguments, right? But to be honest, bro, I really just want to sit back and enjoy the show because, Terry, when is the last time we have seen freshman impact players like this on two elite teams mm -hmm. talking about possibly wide receiver one on it's, each team i said it earlier man on the uh the buckeye roast it's refreshing it, honestly <laughs> it's refreshing Ra rather than seeing the same players over and over again um that are just you know staying because of eligibility and all that good stuff we're seeing some some fresh young players up and coming and literally like taking the spot of like the best player in college football um, mm -hmm. at that position. So I don't know. I mean, I want to kind of get into the weeds a little bit and talk about comparing them. Um, if, if you want to lead us Go that direction, ahead. but I mean, yeah, I mean, take the, and, ta hey, you take the, you, you take the role right I now. You. I got pass the keys over to you. I got you. So, I mean, overall, like, it's kind of funny that these two are being compared to each other. Obviously it's because they are freshmen, um, but and they're probably the maybe two best receivers in college football. Um, but they're really going to be paired together for the rest of their careers now, to the point where we're going to be talking about what they do when they both are in the NFL Facts. in their rookie season. They're going to be battling for offensive rookie of the year. Um, but I mean, I, the one thing that to me really separates them is just opportunity so far. And and Ryan Williams had the opportunity to play in a big game like that Georgia game. And I'll have uh, uh, Jeremiah Smith is going to have that coming up against Oregon in a couple of weeks. Um, so once that game is done, I don't know if Alabama plays um, any teams in between them that are like another opportunity for a big game for Ryan Williams. Um, but once JJ can actually get on the big stage, it'll be a night game. Um, you know, if he goes out there and balls out, then then the conversation will 
I think can go can lean more towards him because he's probably a more complete receiver. Um, but right now, dude, for me, Ryan Williams, man, it, once you prove you can do that on the big stage, because I, I like that. I, I, I don't even care about somebody's stats, bro. Give me a dude who shows up in the big game mm-hmm. over someone who puts up a bunch of stats and then gives me 60 yards and no touchdowns in a big game. Facts. Facts, um, yeah. I, I agree with you, man. Um, and, and, and here's the thing, like, when you know, I mean, we can nitpick and all of this stuff, but <laughs> I think that uh, Jeremiah would have more yards or maybe even more touchdowns if he had a quarterback who was more accurate throwing the deep ball, right? Uh, I, I, I think that that's the thing. Like, Jalen Miro, when you look at the numbers, when you look at the stats, like, he's one of the best. He's an elite deep ball throwers. And, I mean, hell, shit. Well, Ryan Williams out there doing, he going to definitely make his numbers look even we'll better. And but, I was going to say, some of that probably has to do with Ryan Williams being an elite deep ball receiver. Mm-hmm. So, I, and I think that JJ is, bro. I mean, I I'm he, hoping that he, I'm he hoping is. that they. I mean, to be honest, bro, we ain't really had to open up the dang on playbook. I mean, right. you know, Bama, Bama was struggling against, uh, you know, <laughs> some a team earlier in the season, you know. So, mm-hmm. I mean, we haven't had to do anything. I mean, uh, you know, people was asking how much did Chip Kelly probably use of his playbook so far this season. It's like. Uh, maybe 30 percent 20 percent if that like mm-hmm. so i mean th- there's a whole lot that we just haven't had to see yet and like you said he had to play in the big stage so you know the boy was definitely in his bag having oh, to cook he was cooking yeah definitely he was cooking man uh i seen i don't know did you see the sec shorts i didn't watch it i somebody sent it but i didn't watch it man that was hilarious and then uh what's her name the Anne girl did one and they said bro, i like her I stuff i like her stuff bro yeah she said that i haven't seen dogs get beat so bad since michael vick i said <laughs> dang <laughs> oh man but i think That's everybody crazy. just needs to sit back and enjoy this bro because like this is this is something that I don't think that we're going to get often. Hopefully, we can. But, I mean, the the pedigree that these guys have, you don't really see this that often, man. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like to, to come in and step on campus and be able to say, like, I'm number one wide receiver. You don't normally, like, imp- number one yeah, impact you- player. It, I mean, this is kind man. of – yeah, that's kind of unheard of. So I think that stop all the arguing. I mean, yeah, I guess it's fun for debate and all of that. But I think really people really need to like sit back, soak this up, and mm-hmm. just enjoy it, man. Because you know, and hopefully we get to see these teams on the field at the same time and watch and see Ooh, how these guys battle. That would be good. That would be, be that would be sweet, man. If we get yeah. to see Alabama versus Ohio State this year with these two guys uh-huh. against these secondaries, because both teams have good secondaries. That would be crazy. And it's possible that we could see them face each other year, freshman year, sophomore year. Hell, even junior year, especially with the uh the way the playoffs yeah. is. So I think in, in their junior year, we have Alabama on the schedule. Maybe. I know we have Alabama and Georgia coming up. Mm-hmm. I don't know which one's first though. Hold on. I thought we got Texas. Yeah, we got, we got Texas. Texas next year. Oh, yeah, never mind. And then, yeah, never we mind. got home yeah. home with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got the home and home. So that, it'll be they'll the year be after gone. Yeah, it'll be, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So uh, let's talk about uh, some games. I want to know, we got uh, about, what, four or five games here, Terry. Uh, uh, which, which one of these games interests you that you want to talk about? Uh, first one I want to talk about is Michigan State versus Oregon. Mm. Um, now I know I'm I'm kind of not starting in chronological order because this is a night game, Don't worry about late it. game, <laughs> starting at 9 p.m. on Fox. But I'm curious to see what Michigan State looks like against Oregon after we just played them. I, you know that having that back to back, I think is pretty cool. I know that you can't really use uh, those comparisons in college football, but come on, man, it's still gonna be cool to see it. You know what I mean? Um, so I don't know what do you think that game is gonna look like. 
I, I don't know. Like I said, it, it's all really dependent. I think Michigan State has, like, they have good linebackers, so I do want to see how Oregon's able to run against them. Are they able to do the same thing, you know, um, Ohio State's running backs were able to do? Um, but I'm I'm a little worried about, like, Michigan State secondary, you know, and Oregon yeah. does have – Oregon has the skill talent and things like that. And then again, like I said, Michigan State wasn't disciplined. You know, like they, they do have some mistakes to clean up. And I don't think that those mistakes can be cleaned up in a week. And then again, Aiden Childs is like, he has those what the F moments again that you can always count on. I like that game. kid, dude. I do, I, like I do too. I do too. But he got to grow out of those what the f moments, bro. Because mm-hmm. you don't want those sticking with you when you are when you hit junior status or senior status or yeah, you know. Because I think he does have the talent to where hey, yeah, he, he could do junior or senior, you know. But you don't want to be the talent where you got to be fifth year senior, you know. And yeah. I think the only way yeah. he'll do that is if he keeps having those what the f moments. So mm-hmm. they got to clean that up. Absolutely. I agree. And, I mean, he is talented, though, and that's where I want to see. Like, That's why I want to watch this game mostly is Michigan State's offense versus Oregon's defense um, just because I think that they could give them some problems. I, I really do because they were giving us some problems, and I think our defense is a lot better than Oregon's. I, I agree with that. I agree with that. I, I wanted to go and I want to talk about this Rutgers at Nebraska, 3 p.m. kickoff CBS. Now, <laughs> Rutgers is undefeated going into this game at 4-0. But what a lot of people don't know is, is uh, Rutgers going into the season had dealt with a lot of key people uh, being hurt. Now, I believe they lost a like, linebacker for the whole season. Yeah, but they that. have started to get healthy, and guys have been coming back. And uh, I think that this Rutgers team is just co- going to continue to still build. Now, you got Nebraska. You see uh, the talent that Dylan Raiola has had. But then also, you kind of saw that offense this past week take a little step back, right? Um, not looking – you know, how they've been looking, you know, with Dylan Raiola out there. So talk to me uh, about what you think about this Rutgers-Nebraska game because I think Rutgers is going to pull it out. I think Greg Schiano is going to bring all, all the stops and definitely try to confuse this kid. And then also I think that Greg Schiano is going to probably try to make, uh, you know, get Dylan Raiola like on the run and get him uncomfortable because I mean he's obviously a pocket quarterback and not trying to move around. So yeah, who who did uh, Nebraska lose to recently? Let's pull that up. All right, look that up for me. Yeah, because this game is interesting to me because I want to find out if Nebraska is really um, like a good team that can make a little bit of noise. I mean, mm-hmm. obviously Dylan Rayola is young, but he's Illinois. looked good in situations. See that that is actually interesting to me because Illinois, I think, is a team that could give any team in the Big Ten a, a problem in one game. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Um, like I think if we played Illinois, they could catch us on the right day, maybe with it being raining or something at their place, and we could have a game with them where we win by like three or seven. Um, that's kind of the team I look at them as. And they'll right. probably lose us. They'll probably lose some stupid games too. But anyway, back to Nebraska. I want to see if Nebraska can, is really that. You know, if they're like that, like in, Rutgers is a good test. It used to not be. Obviously, Shiano has them cooking right now. Um, and honestly, they got one of my favorite players in the Big Ten um, at running back, that Manungai kid. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he's a baller, man. Yeah, my but, fantasy. <laughs> he's, yeah, you, you be getting – he be cooking too. They be, and they give him the ball a lot. Uh, so, I don't know, man. That That's an interesting game. If I had to call it, I would probably say that Nebraska will win this game. Um, because I think Nebraska is pretty good. I think they caught Illinois, and I think Illinois caught them. And probably, um, you know, they always have a good defense. So probably had some, gave Rayola some issues. Uh, I think I would take Nebraska to win the game, though. All right. Let me give you this score. Nebraska beat Purdue 28-10. to 10. Okay. How do you think those points were spread out? What do you mean? 
When do you think Nebraska scored their 28 points? In what quarters? <laughs> uh, I, they scored them all in the same quarter? All right. I'm just going to be honest with you, bro. Nebraska didn't score a single point in the first quarter or second quarter. They scored a touchdown, and when it was 7-3 and three at the end of the third quarter against Purdue, and then they put on 21 on top of dang on uh, uh, Purdue's head or whatever to get to 21. Like, they just – three touchdowns. But, I mean, one of the touchdowns wasn't even from the offense. It was a it defense. Was a, it was a defensive touchdown. <laughs> so, their offense really only scored what? How many? Uh, what three? Hey, but that's part of that's part of the reason why I want to know if Nebraska is good though. Is there? Man. I mean, their defense scored a touchdown too. That counts. Hey, right. a defensive touchdown counts against Rutgers. Hey, I was high on Rutgers coming into the year. I just think that after watching Nebraska throughout the year, I got higher and higher on them. That's why I'm picking them to win the game. Um, but I don't know, man. I, I mean. I think I wouldn't be surprised if Rutgers won the game. Like, you know what I mean? It's right, not, right. Like, I wouldn't I be surprised know. if either if either one. I've been rocking with Rutgers, uh, Rutgers since the offseason, so I'm definitely still going with Rutgers, man. Like, as Greg Shiano uh, keeps saying, they're going to keep chopping and chopping. I don't see how Nebraska – I mean, I don't see how Nebraska going to stop coming on guy, bro. That dude is just a force to be reckoned with, and – uh, like you said, they're going to continue to give him the ball, give him the ball, and give him the ball. And, I mean, even last week, I'm sitting there just watching, like, a defense break against Rutgers because they just they just couldn't handle it. Yeah. I, was, I mean, like, Rutgers just be sitting there and they'll be like, hey – uh, What's your weakness? And we're gonna we're gonna do it. Oh, we don't need to. We we can't throw the ball today. Okay, no worries. Uh, we will run the ball thirty three damn times. Did PFF have their their offensive linemen as the every single position? They were the top graded linemen um, across the board in the whole in the whole country, maybe or the Big Ten. I'm not. Know, I'm not sure. I think I don't know, but. Might be the Big Ten, but I mean, hey, they got a Big that's Ten still, game. That's still crazy. Yeah. Um, I mean, dude, if their O line is like that, they're gonna win this game for sure. Because Manunga is like that, and <laughs> they're gonna wear that Nebraska defense down if that's the case. So, right. Um, but well, I mean, we'll see, dude. Because I, I think Nebraska's got some players on defense too. They do. They so. do. They do got. They they do have some defensive uh, ballers mm-hmm. out there. So I can't even cap on that. I think it's going to be a good game. And here's the thing that I really wanted to talk about hitting on this game. Neither team is ranked. Now, I'll tell you this. If if Kentucky had Rutgers record, you know where they'd be. Ranked in the oh, top 10. They'd be in the top 15. I've seen Arkansas with this same record. <laughs> and they were in the top 10. And guess where they didn't finish? Not in the top 25. <laughs> bro, I'm so sick and tired of this dang on disrespect, but you know what? That's why I always say F the AP pro, bro. I don't like yeah, it. Don't I don't it. like it. it. It makes no sense, bro. And it's nothing but a whole bunch of uh, biased nerds who don't even watch ha- m- shit. Uh, <laughs> a quarter of the damn game. Like, let's be real. Like mm-hmm. all you did was look at a damn scoreboard and you have no idea what, what happened in the game. I mean, I was talking to someone and they were just having this whole defense, whole defense about why this team so good and all this stuff. And I said, Did you know that the quarterback wasn't even playing? The quarterback <laughs> wasn't playing. Oh, oh, you didn't watch the game. Just shut up. Like you don't know talking, anything. Man. They be talking bro, about I watching the game. Crazy, bro. Like, just watch you, the film, man. You know who Rutgers played this year? They played and beat Virginia Tech, mm. who we just talked about earlier against Miami. Now, obviously, transitive property, but Virginia Tech's not trash, man. And Rutgers beat them, so I don't know. They should be ranked, probably. I mean, right. maybe not Nebraska since they lost the game already. Um, but Rutgers definitely should. I mean, Rutgers should do that. I, 
I don't know. I, I would think that any team in the Big Ten or the SEC that's undefeated to this point would be ranked. And then I also another thing that I don't understand, like they just want to rank all of these uh G5 teams. Mm-hmm. I don't get Why? it. Why? <laughs> you really ranking them over like because my thing is this if you're gonna rank a team, you are saying I think this team is going to beat these teams up under them or has a better chance. You telling me that these G5 teams got a better chance of beating these P14? Come on, man. I'm not buying it, bro. Like, I really want to see what G5 school is stopping Kyle Manunga. They're not. You don't have no – And Rutgers defense is going to have smoke for any G5 team too. (laughs) Fact. You don't have – you don't have a strength and conditioning program that can get you ready for that on the G5 level. You exactly. just don't. I'm sorry. Um, 100%. I agree. You got another game in here? I, I saw you re- you wrote one in. Well, we kind of already talked about it a little bit ago. Right. Um, I You know, I wanted to add the Michigan at Washington game in here because, I, dude, listen. And every time I watch Michigan play, and this is about to sound so stupid, probably. Every time I watch Michigan play, I'm, I, I end up putting something in the group chat like Michigan's about to beat Ohio State or something stupid like that, right? People keep getting mad at me. But if I'm being honest about Michigan, they play with a ton of energy, dude. When you watch their team, they look like they're having fun playing football. Their defense flies around. Like, they do look good. Now their defense also got got when they played against Texas, so we know that that can happen. We know that it can happen, right? And that was the best offense they played, best offensive line they played. Um, but they look like they're out there having fun. The only thing that – the reason why I'm, I'm – pretty much every game that they play, I want to add that game on so we can talk about it because I think they could lose to anybody. Is just because of that offense, dude. I, it, The two games that they played so far since having Alex Orgy, neither one of the te- – the, both the teams they played, they looked confused in the first half of the game. And basically they were just getting their ass whipped in the first half of the game because they looked confused. They didn't they didn't know how to stop what Michigan was doing. And then they adjusted, and Michigan's offense did nothing. You look back to the USC game, dude, they didn't have a first down in the second half until that last drive where they got that one fucking lucky run where he broke like three tackles and just ran through all them dudes and they just they just fell right. off of him. Fact. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And I don't know. I just think any team can beat them. Any team. Any team can can stop that offense the way that they run it without Orgy being able to throw the ball at all with any you know with any confidence. Like any, basically any throw that you're asking him to make, it, it's like a 50-50 chance that it's going to be a completion. Right. And that's just short throws. You get to deep deep balls, and you're probably looking more like 25-75. <laughs> like that's going to be incomplete. Like. I don't know, man. Well, I, just, I think. Go ahead, go ahead. Well, Vegas do, does not disagree with you, Terry, because that's, uh, that's what I'm saying. I mean, Washington's coming in uh, minus two and a half, and then guess like, who else agrees with them? I and no, nah, that's like if it's one point five, that's a pickle. <laughs> like two and a half, that ain't no pickle. Um, <laughs> but uh, ESPN Analytics got Washington at fifty-seven point seven percent. That's what I'm saying. So we had to talk about this game. I mean, when when Vegas and that ESPN predictor thinks that you could lose, I'm not going to look at that game as a game that you can't lose. <laughs> right. Especially when I watch it with my own eyes. When I watch them play, it's like it once a team just figures out how to make sure they're in the right gaps and, you know, not letting you, like, sneak some shit out the back door. Once they figure that out, their offense just stops, dude. They don't do nothing. And I, not, I, literally nothing, not even first downs. So, I mean, any team that they play against, Michigan is on upset alert for me for the rest of the year. Maybe maybe not um, who they play, Northwestern or Purdue. They play one of them, okay, that's fine. They can have that one. Yeah, I mean, here's my thing is Washington got dang on, uh, what's his name, Will Rogers, bro. That's just my biggest thing, like – about him now obviously he's a better quarterback than what that team up north has you know what i'm saying but going up against their defense is 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 still a top talented defense in the country it is as well so that's that's what i'm worried about and then you know like washington um 
They did have what their last game they lost against uh, Rutgers. It was a pretty fought game. So, I mean, if, can they build on that? And I think if they build on that, then they could go go ahead. I mean, and win this game, like you're saying, because they were on the road at Rutgers. They will be at home now. If they can capitalize and learn and fix those mistakes, this is one of those games that I'm saying. I think that, yeah, in a week you fix those you or you can fix those, yeah. you can win your next game. But, I mean, I just feel like even when Washington was playing like Weber or uh, Eastern uh, Michigan University, it's just like you putting up 35. 35 was the most that they put up, and that was week one. 30 is the second most. That was week two. And then they only they only put up 24, 24, and then 18. So, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, Will Rogers in that offense is what worries me for Washington, especially going yeah. up against a top-tier defense, because I think that that, all, like, that offense could lose them the game. No, 100%. And that's the problem with playing Michigan right now, um, because I'm picking them to be upset by – some of these teams, right? And there's a chance that they won't be upset by any of them because their defense will just be that good. They'll mm-hmm. create turnovers and, you know, they'll be all the teams that they're supposed to be. And then maybe they'll lose to Oregon um, and Ohio State, whatever. Say right. they did it that way. I mean, there's a chance of that just because their defense is really good. It's really talented. Um, and they they create points, honestly. Like, you know, they Will Johnson getting a pick six won them the USC game. Um but I also think that there's this like some of these teams are just coached by coaches that are too good to let that happen. Like Lincoln Riley is not too good as a coach to let that happen. <laughs> Lincoln Riley is known as a coach that does dumb shit like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and then PJ Fleck is not a coach that's good enough to not let that happen. Right. Now, I don't know much about um, Washington's new coach is Jed Fish. They got right. I don't know a ton about Jed Fish, but if he's a good enough coach to just not let your team basically throw the ball away by by you know what i mean like whatever just make sure you're not turning the ball over they could lose they could beat them because you know you were talking about Rutgers a minute ago and Manungai okay well Ro- Washington played at Rutgers and Manungai got 132 yards on 25 carries okay but they held Rutgers to 21 points i mean whose offense do you think is better Michigan's or Rutgers Rutgers Okay, they they held Rutgers to twenty one points, man. And if Michigan's is worse. They could help hold them to worse. Just don't turn the ball over. That's the recipe to beat man. Michigan right now. <laughs> don't turn the ball over, man. Well, y'all heard it don't right the there from over. my guy Terry. Uh, Terry, you got anything else that you want to tell the people? Uh, nah, man. Just uh, you can follow me on Twitter, uh, CFB underscore stop. Uh, that's about it, man. You can get us out of here, Mike. Yeah, man, we appreciate y'all checking us out, man. We will be back. Um, you know, we had to do this little recording. I got family stuff going on. But we should be back next week live right here on the Fans Edge. But we got to bring y'all a show Wednesdays at 7.30 Eastern time, man. Make sure you're tuning in. And also, like you see on the bottom, follow us on all social media networks at Best Damn Media, man. And with that, We are out.